Welcome to our third tutorial on assembly. I'm going to start by creating a new assembly document. Select product, OK. Here's a dialog window that prompts you for a new part number. If you want this to keep appearing in the future, you, need to, you can select this option under Tools, Options, Infrastructure, Product Structure. Check the Manual Input checkbox under Part Number. Click OK for now. OK, let's try this again. File, New, Product. Let's call it Final Product. OK, now let's bring our components to assembly. Right click, select Components, Existing Component. Navigate to the directory where your components are stored. We'll control select this part and this subassembly and open them. We seem to be missing a part. Let's click the desk to go find it. Right click on this part which appears to be missing. Select Find. And here's our part. Open it. Now let's close the desk. And here we have our components. Next, we're going to use the compass to position the components. Now we need two of these components for this assembly. Let's right click and copy. Right click and paste at the assembly level. You'll notice that when I copy, I click at the component level, but when I paste, it's at the assembly level. Now on the component I just highlighted, let's move it. Oops, it's actually not highlighted. Hmm. Okay, I see what's happened. I've copied the wrong component. All right, let's fix this. Right click. Let's go back to the assembly level and delete the component. Now let's go get the right one. Right click, copy, and back to the assembly level where we paste it. OK, now we've got the right component. And once it's selected, we can move it. OK. Now let's rearrange our tree. Move it down, apply, click OK. Now let's use Fix Component and Fix This Component. We do need to hide these bolts. So let's right click after we expand the specification tree. Selecting Hide Show, one bolt is moved to No Show. But we do need all four to disappear, so let's, um, let's bring this back. And let's go deeper to the part body level. Right click, Hide Show, and now as you can see, all four bolts are hidden. All right, we're going to constrain our component now. First is the coincidence constraint. To constrain this hole to this hole. Second, this hole to this hole. Third, this hole to this hole. And lastly, this hole to this hole. Next, we will apply the contact constraint, this face to this face. this face to this face. Let's hit Update. As you can see, our components are constrained. All right, let's uh, bring the bolts back. Right click, toggle back to Show, OK. We seem to have a problem here. 
it looks like this part doesn't match the base exactly. Hmm. Well, let's replace this component. Shift. I can use the Replace Component function from the Product Structure toolbar. Or I can right click, right click on the component, select Components, select Replace Components. Now we navigate to find the right component and we open it. Katia prompts us, asking us if we want to replace all instances of the selected element. We will choose yes and click OK. Now, as you can see, it fits perfectly with the base. Sometimes when you replace components, some constraints will get broken. If that happens, you will see a yellow exclamation mark in the specification tree next to the component. When this happens, you have two choices. You can delete the constraint and create another, or you can double click on the constraint and select more. And right here, you will see the word disconnected. You'll need to click to reconnect and then click OK. Next, I'd like to show you, uh, let's collapse and expand the plate component. Okay. You'll see I'm in the part design workbench. I double click on the plate at the part level. All right, let's add some chamfer to this part. Click on the edge, enter a value of an eighth of an inch, hit tab, and preview. When I click OK, you will see that the changes will be applied to this plate as well. As you can see, basically you can make adjustments at the part level anytime. After making your adjustments, you may go back to the assembly level and keep assembling your components. And this concludes our third tutorial on assembly.